Danzi boys and girls and fellow lifelong learners. My name is Keith Diakiu and I'm a proud Métis Canadian as well as a professional geologist. So today I'm going to learn just like you the uncommon art form of flint napping with my good friend Mr. Todd Brown. Now before we get into the actual techniques just talk about uh, a little bit about the geology. So when you deal with the different types of host rock to work from, to go from a rock to a stone tool, on the high end you would have obsidian, which is an igneous rock, it's volcanic, essentially glass. And in the other end you would have quartzite, which is more rudimentary, very hard to fine tune and have a sharp edge, such as the obsidian, which is actually sharper than any surgeon's scalpel. And kind of in the middle, that a lot of Native American cultures use was flint. In this case, I'm kind of holding up that intermediate, which is chert. It still has a nice finish, not as good as obsidian, but not as rudimentary as the quartzite. So now Todd's gonna go with the two major techniques to go from a rock into a valuable stone tool. So he's gonna begin with pressure flaking, correction, percussion flaking, followed by pressure flaking. All right, thanks, Todd. Uh, one thing, first, first off, remember, wear gloves. This stuff gets awful sharp and it'll cut you very fast. Make sure you have uh, something to cover your eyes, safety glasses, and uh, something that uh, your legs won't get cut. So safety first, kids. Now, start with a big rock like this. And what we wanna do is we wanna create little flakes that are usable. So we wanna make flakes like this that we can turn into our stone tools. So basically it's just a matter of hitting the rock in the right place. So a little piece. Now sometimes this this does happen, but there's a here's a tiny little piece that came off that would be able to to be used actually it's very sharp just the way it is. So that is that is your basic percussion. Let's try once more. There we go. There's a flake that's very usable. So you'd want to be starting with with stuff like that, and then pressure flaking. Get my my pad here so I don't don't cut my hand, and my my tool. And you would take a flake like this, and we'll start by trying to make a uh, a point on it. You can hear. The clicking as I take little pieces off. And there's the start of a point right there. So that's pressure flaking. It's just taking a little bit off at a, at a time, just chipping away at it using pressure. Now, if you're really quick and you get a really good flake, you can make a rough point like this one here. And this is very usable. You could, uh, you could kill an animal with that. Or if you have more time and a little bit more skill, you can make some really nice ones like this. So that, that's the, the basics of pressure flaking. Now, one thing the Egyptians used to do is something called flake over grind. They would start with a slab and then they would use pressure flaking to create an edge on it. So that, that's another technique that takes a lot more work. So basically, there, there's what you, you start with the big rock, you get to a flake, and then you can make yourself a really nice little point. All right, well, thank you very much, Todd, for uh, touching base on those two major techniques for flint napping, from percussion to pressure flaking. You're quite welcome. And just a further note on the geology front, um, this is dacite. It's also igneous rock. Right? It's basically found in the belly of a volcano. Not as high end as the obsidian in you know, Mexico or Egypt, but it's, it's pretty close, right? Because the edging of that, again, sharper than any surgeon's scalpel. And a lot of the Native Americans on the Great Plains would have used this uh, for the sacred buffalo hunts. And then one other thing to, to leave you 
with us being in the 21st century, we're very busy, we're very connected, but always remember, reconnect with nature. It's chicken soup for the soul. Marcy, thank you again very much, Todd, for You're your expertise, welcome. and stay tuned for our next learning.